uh, we started a series on the revival instrument of Yahuwah, Hans Nelson Hauger, who was a massive revival instrument in Norway between 1796 and 1824. From 1804 to 1814, he was in prison. But during that revival, and it was during that revival that Norway got its independence from Denmark. And some people believe that Hans Nelson Hauger was like a prophetic voice leading to the independence of a people. So, it's very important for the church around the earth to know about this man of God, Hans Nelson Hauger. So we're going to look a little bit about him today. We're looking at it and we're taking this from a uh, doctorate, doctoral thesis done for the University of London. And, and it's to do with uh, Hans Nelson Hauger and the uh, uh, prophetic imagination. Occasionally a figure appears on the stage of history whose impact is so great that scholars are still trying to explain it centuries later. One such person was Hans Nielsen Hauger, 1771-1824, a farmer's son who spent the year 1796-1804 spreading a message from God to the people of Norway before he was finally imprisoned by the Danish authorities. Hauger's activity initiated a religious revival that swept across Norway, particularly among the peasant class. The influence of Hauger's message and the revival that followed in its wake caused significant change not only in the Norwegian church, but also in the areas of education, business, politics, and social welfare, to such an extent that the consequences are considered to, the, to be perceivable 200 years or so later. In the reading of the vast literature on Hauger and the Haugian revival, it soon becomes clear that although Hauger is accredited with such enduring influence, there has been still been no convincing proposition as to the precise nature and action of the spark in his message that ignited the blaze of religious fervor which ensued. No one denies that Hauger's preaching and writing were key factors in the initiation of the Haugian revival and the changes that followed in its wake. But the question remains under debate as to what it was about Hauger's message that changed people's lives. Providing a possible answer to this issue is the fundamental aim of this research, of this guy, person. I really ought to give them the name of the person who wrote this thing, but uh, it's not to hand, so you'll just have to get it another time. Okay. From the outset, my research task was limited to the, by the fact that Halga preached extemporally, extemporarily. Oh, hear that? He preached extemporarily. He did not prepare his oral sermons, nor did he or any of his followers record what he preached. All that remains of Halga's ideology and message is contained in the in his printed works. This fact consequently narrowed down the field of my research to the matter of determining whether Hauger's writings, particularly his four early texts, might contain the answer to my fundamental research. Pat, question. Okay. Uh, now we are jumping over to page 20 because I seem to have mislaid page 19. Okay, so we're jumping over to a biographical sketch, but it's interesting, he preached extemporarily and no one recorded it. We are blessed today, we have the internet, so when we don't plan what we're going to preach, you can still get it out there, hallelujah. A biographical sketch. There is a shortage of biographies of Hans Nelson Hauger. There is no shortage, sorry. The brief biographical sketch presented here is, the, is, is for those for unfamiliar with Hauger's life. Besides his own writing, particularly Lerbe Bannen, 1796, I've, I've started to put that one out already on the internet, but it's in Norwegian. Uh, but maybe I'll get it out in English soon. The Skrivelse over der Onderli Lievets Lerbe or Strid, Lerbe Bannen, a uh, racing track. 
descriptions over the spiritual life's run and uh, fight, 1804. Hans Nielsen Helder's Reise, the travels of Hans Nielsen Helder, and religious feelings, 1817. The main Norwegian biographical sources on Helga are Bang, 1874, and Norberg, 1966 1970. The major sources in English are Nordvet, 1965, and Shaw, 1979. I say all this because we guys, we need to know a bit about this guy because we're about to enter into a new revival in Norway. It's 200 years after the first one. I mean, we've reached 1996. The revival did not yet begin. We reached 2006 and it did not begin. We are now in 2010. We, it's high time for the revival to come, for Yahuwah to restore to Norway the years that the locusts have taken, as the prophet um, um, preacher Matthew Meyer has said when he came here in, on, on July the 1st, on July the 4th, 19, I mean 2009. The biographical sketch, we continue. Hans Nielsen Haugen lived from the 3rd of April, 1771, to the 29th of March, 1824. Actually, I shouldn't say this, but just to celebrate the revivalists' call on this nation, and just to celebrate the fact that Yahuwah has sent me to Norway also, I had two of my daughters born on the 3rd of April, just to make sure just to point and mark to the fact that we are entering in a new revival. Both Elizabeth and Hannah were born on the 3rd of April, but not 1771, mind you, 2006 and 2008. So just for that, I made sure that we had our children born on that day. Okay. He, won, he was one of the eight surviving children of Niels Mikkelsen and Marie, Maria Oldsdatter, who worked a small farm at Hauger in the parish of Tuna near Fredrikstad in southeastern Norway. The pious nature of the family no doubt contributed to the depth of deliber religious deliberation that Hauger records as major preoccupation of his childhood and adolescence. These years were coloured by inner turmoil in which Hauger struggled to choose between God and the world. Hauger makes much of various childhood incidents in which he almost died, the most well-known of which concerning a boating accident on the River Glomma. You can re hear about that if you're Norwegian in Lerperbanen, which I was reading uh, earlier. The impression one gets from these recollections is that Hauger considered that he was saved from death for the great work God had predestined him to do. Amen. In 1795, Hauga spent a year working as a butcher's apprentice in Fredrikstad. He described this time as one of suffering much taunting from his peers, not only for his lonely occupation, but for his dedication to prayer and Bible reading. Eventually, Hauga returned home at the request of his parents on 5th of April 1796. While ploughing a field below the family home, Hauger had the, the religious experience that radically altered his outlook and the subsequent course of his life. Although Hauger alludes to this experience in his early writings, the most detailed record dates from 20 years after the event when he used the following words. I'm sorry, that, but we're not going to go into those words because they're all in Norwegian and you guys won't get it. And it will probably take me too long to try and translate it. Okay, you want me to? You want me to try? One time, as I worked under an open heaven, I sang from memory on the psalm, Jesus, Jesus, the Serda for ending at Smarga. Now, I'm not sure what that means. But if you want to go, do your research. When I had sung it, the second verse, strengthen me with strength in the soul within, that I can find what the Spirit commands. Take me to, capture me in my 
speech and thought lead me and close me so as I go, so something as I go, so far as I go. Me and what is me and mine. I, 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 willing, I will willingly lose when you alone in the soul shall live and your um, sida for door molista. What that disturbs my in the calm. I'm afraid I cannot read this, it will take me forever. So if we get a translation, you'll get it another day. All right, okay, we continue. That evening, Hauger talked earnestly with his family, resulting in two of his sisters becoming changed in the spirits in their mind. This initial success in the home began what was to become eight years of intensive writing and itinerant preaching on Hauger's part. In the weeks after this experience, Hauger spent his spare time writing his first book, En Betrachtning Over Vardens Dorlichet, something to do with the world's badness, 1796, which he took to be published in Christiana at his own expense in the early summer. His second book, For Sir Till an Afhandling on Good's Wisdom, was published that autumn. Hauger distributed these books in places he preached. Initially, he spoke in homes in his own locality of Rossoy, but in time, he began to travel further afield to, to places such as Moss, Frederikstadt, Christiana, Drammen, and Kongsberg. This activity did not go unnoticed by the church authorities. After speaking at a house in Frederikstadt during Christmas 1797, Hauger was arrested on the charge of breaking the conventicle at 1741. The opening paragraph of which stated, En var skal ikke under pretext at ville opbygge andre og opvekke sal, sial, gå og om fra sted til andre. Eller det mange seg med lare embettet hvor til de verken har havet guds eller menneskets kall. Something to do with, you can't go from place to place building people up unless you've got a specific call from God, I think. Spring 1798 found Hauger speaking in Christiana. This resulted in two separate arrests which provoked the writing of In Sanhed's Beschenelsen, A Truth's Confession, and the Ehrenfoldis Lara, and the uh, one-sided or one-something teaching, I think, respectively. Hauger subsequently travelled to Bergen and Stavanger, presumably to avoid further harassment from the authorities, before returning home in late autumn. In 1799, he returned to Bergen, and from there he travelled north to Trondheim, with the intention of finding another printer for his books. While in Trondheim, he was placed under arrest and remained in prison for three months for breach of the Conventicle Act. During this imprisonment, Halga wrote Den Christlia Lara, The Christian Teaching a collection of sermons based on the lectionary readings for the church year. After his release, Hauger travelled home through the centre of Norway and carried south, ca continued south to Copenhagen, where he spent the summer of 1800 printing and binding his books. Commentators make much of the fact that during his months in Copenhagen, Hauger kept four printing presses running constantly to meet the demand for his various books, which subsequently shipped back to Norway for distribution. A summer in Denmark gave Hauger time to think about how to prevent the religious movement he had founded falling into disrepute. There were many accusations that Haugiernera, Haugiernera or people from Haugen, were neglecting their work and spending time in prayer, song and Bible reading. Some groups on the fringe of the movement had withdrawn from society and were waiting for the return of Christ. Hauger returned to Norway in 1800 to correct these distorted beliefs and with plans to set the believers to work. Part of the latter initiative included the establishment of a paper mill at Eiker 
a cooperative enterprise led by Halder's brother, where the workers and their families lived in community. In the summer of 1801, 